Uh, so let's talk about aging as a disease. Uh, when I started my research, disease here at Harvard Medical School, it was considered, if, if there's something that's wrong with you, um, and it's a rare thing, has to be less than 50% of the population, that's definitely a disease. And then people work their whole lives to try and cure that condition. Aging is 80 to 90% the cause of heart disease, Alzheimer's. If we didn't get old and our bodies stayed youthful, we would not get those diseases. And actually what we're showing in my lab is if you turn the clock back in tissues, those diseases go away. So aging is the problem. And instead, through you know, most of the last 200 years, we've been sticking Band-Aids on diseases that have already occurred because of aging, and then it's too late. Meet Dr. David Sinclair, a renowned biologist and professor at Harvard University, who has dedicated his career to understanding the mechanisms of aging and exploring ways to extend human lifespan. Through his extensive research, Dr. Sinclair has shared a wealth of knowledge on longevity and the potential to slow or even reverse the aging process. In this video, we will share Dr. David Sinclair's top five secrets to longevity. First, we will discuss the role of genes. Next, supplementation and anti-aging. Then we will take a look at the role of exercise in promoting longevity. Number four is the importance of fasting. And last but not least, we will find out what and when to eat for healthy aging. I think aging is a loss of information in the same way that when you Xerox something a, a thousand times, you'll lose that information or you try to copy a cassette tape, or even if you send information across the internet, some of it will get lost. That's what I think is aging. And there are two types of information in the body. There is the genetic information, which is digital, ATCG, the chemical letters of DNA. But there's this other part of the information in the body that's just as important. It's essential, in fact. And that's the systems that control which genes are switched on and off, in what cell, at what time, in response to what we eat, etc. And it turns out that 80% of our future longevity and health is controlled by this second part, the epigenetic information, the control systems. Uh, I liken the DNA to the, the music that's on a DVD or a compact disc for the younger people who used to use these I things. I recall. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the epigenome is the reader that says, okay, in this cell, we need to play that set of songs. And in this other cell, we have to play a different set of songs. But over time, aging is the equivalent of scratching the CD and the DVD so that you, you're not playing the right songs. And cells, when they don't hear the right songs, they get messed up and they don't function well. And that is what I'm saying is the main driver of aging. Genes influence aging by regulating how cells repair damage, manage stress, and maintain function. Some genes promote longevity by enhancing cell survival and repair, while others trigger aging by reducing cell division and increasing damage over time. As these genetic processes change with age, they contribute to slower healing, weaker immunity, and age-related diseases. According to a study in the Journal of Gerontology, while certain genetic factors, such as the APOE gene, have been associated with extended lifespan, the overall contribution of genetics to longevity is modest, with environmental and lifestyle factors playing significant roles. With this being said, let's jump to the next hallmark of aging, according to Dr. Sinclair. Yes, we are going to talk about the connection between supplementation and aging. And again, it goes back to the debate, should you supplement with growth hormone or testosterone? All of these activities will give you immediate benefits. You'll, you'll bulk up more, you'll feel better immediately. But based on the research, it's at the expense of long-term health. So my view of longevity, the way I treat my body is, um, I don't burn both candles. I have one end of the candle lit. I, I'm very careful, I don't blow on it. Um, but I also do enough exercise that I'm building up my muscle, but I'm, I'm not huge. Anyone who's seen me you know, knows that I'm not a, a, a professional bodybuilder. But I try to actually, here's the key, and I haven't said this publicly that I can remember, I pulse things so that I get periods of fasting, and then I eat, then I take a supplement, then I fast, then I exercise, and I'm, I'm taking the supplements and eating in the right timing to allow me to build up muscle sometimes. Because you can't just expect to take something constantly and do something constantly for it to work. Probably you don't want to be taking a supplement every day. You can take it either every other day or give your body a rest. 
And I do the same with my meals. I rest during the day and then I give a nutritious dinner to my body and then give it a rest. Same with exercise. And then I try to time it because there are times when I'm taking the drug metformin, which mimics low energy. For those of you who don't know, metformin is a drug given to type 2 diabetics to bring down their blood sugar levels. But it's been found that looking at tens of thousands of veterans and others, that those two type 2 diabetics live longer than people that don't even get type 2 diabetes. So it's a longevity drug. Right now you have to get it from your doctor in the US. In most other countries, you can just get it over the counter. And you're protected, it looks like, based on uh, epidemiological data, uh, cancer, heart disease, frailty, um, what else, dementia. So I take metformin. Supplementation plays a role in longevity by supporting cellular function, reducing oxidative stress, and mimicking fasting effects. But over-reliance or improper timing can have drawbacks. That if you're taking excess iron as a supplement, you're probably accelerating your aging process. Instead of continuous supplementation, periodic use combined with proper diet and fasting may enhance longevity without negatively impacting long-term health. However, no supplement can replace the benefits of lifestyle choices like exercise, which is another crucial factor in slowing down aging. Now, before we move on, if you have a knack for longevity, let us know. What steps do you take to stay young? So let's explore the role of exercise in promoting longevity. Okay. Well, there are a lot of studies on exercise, and there's really no doubt that moving is good for you. And there are different levels of, of uh, exercise. I'm exercising right now, not just my mouth, but I have a standing desk, right? The reason I'm jumping around is because I'm always standing. So that's exercise. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, if you want to walk, that's important too. 4,000 steps is considered the minimum. 10,000 is an optimum. Um, just like fasting, it's pretty clear that that works. Uh, for example, there are studies of cyclists. It was something like people that cycle over 80 miles a week have a 40% reduction in a variety of diseases, certainly heart disease. So that, that's not even a question. But what's interesting is that we're learning that you don't need much to have a big benefit. It's an asymptotic curve. Um, and in fact, if you overdo it, you probably have reduced benefits, particularly if you start to wear out joints, that kind of thing. But just 10 minutes on a treadmill a few times a week, getting your, lose your breath, get hypoxic as it's called, seems to be very beneficial for long-term health. Um, and that's the kind of exercise that I like to do, aerobic. <laughs> Though I, I do enjoy uh, lifting weights, so that is what I call my exercise, which has other benefits, including maintaining hormone levels, male hormone levels, but also really why I do it is um, I want to be able to counteract the effects of sitting for most of the day. Yeah. And as you get older, you lose muscle mass. It's a percent or so a year. And I don't want to be frail when I'm older and fall over and break my hip, which is which happens every 20 seconds in this country. Exercise is essential for healthy aging and longevity, as it helps maintain muscle mass, bone density, and overall mobility, reducing the risk of falls and chronic diseases. Regular physical activity also supports heart health, brain function, and mental well-being promoting a longer and more active life. Now here's a surprising study connecting exercise with slow aging. Research shows that regular exercise can actually slow down aging by keeping your cells healthier for longer. It helps protect your DNA by maintaining telomeres, those tiny caps on chromosomes that prevent them from wearing out too fast. But exercise isn't the only way to slow down aging. Fasting is another powerful tool. Research by Dr. David Sinclair suggests that fasting triggers longevity mechanisms by activating survival pathways in our cells. Let's see what he has to say about the benefits of fasting. Well, let's start with, with what I think was a big mistake, was the idea that people should never be hungry. We live in a world now where there's at least three meals a day, and then we've got companies selling bars and uh, snacks in between. So the feeling of hunger, almost, some people never experience hunger in their whole lives. It's really, really bad for them. Well, there, there are three main longevity mechanisms that we know of. Um, they have certain names. One's called sirtuins. There's seven of those genes in our body, and we've been working on them for 25 years. Another one's called mTOR. The other one's called AMPK. The names don't matter as much as the fact that they're activated by, by a bit of hunger. Um, to give you an example, in 2005, we we published a science paper that showed uh, 
which at the time was revolutionary, now it's just considered obvious, but one of these sirtuin genes called SIRTP1 was activated by caloric restriction. So we found that animals that had been eating less and had low levels in, of insulin and another factor that's related called IGF-1 insulin, related growth factor, uh, that boosted the levels dramatically of this SIRT1 protective longevity gene. Uh, and then we showed that protects against DNA damage. Uh, and so what we do when we're hungry, uh, skip a meal or two, which is what I do every day, uh, it boosts up our longevity genes and they take care of us. Recent studies suggest that intermittent fasting may promote longevity by enhancing metabolic health and reducing disease risk factors. For instance, a study funded by the National Institute on Aging found that a diet mimicking the effects of fasting was associated with slowed biological aging in healthy adults. Additionally, research indicates that routine long-term intermittent fasting is linked to increased survival rates, highlighting its potential role in extending lifespan. But fasting isn't the only dietary factor influencing longevity. What and when we eat also play a crucial role. Dr. David Sinclair emphasizes that the right food choices and meal timing can enhance the body's natural repair processes, further slowing down aging. Uh, I mean, the first thing that's important to know is that while many people are interested slash obsessed with what they eat, the data that's come out of animal studies, at least, is it's far more important when you eat than what you eat. And this was a, a fantastic study a few years ago by my friend Rafael de Cabo at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda. And he had 10,000 mice on different diets, hoping to find the perfect mix of carbs, protein, and fat. And it turns out that the only ones that lived longer were the ones that only ate once a day. And so that, if we're, we're not mice, but I think that we're close enough to mice that this tells us a lot. But, okay, but I still think the best bang for the longevity buck is to do both well. Eat less often and eat the right things. Dr. Sinclair's research suggests that when we eat can be just as important as what we eat for longevity. But beyond timing, what specific dietary changes make the biggest impact? In his own journey, Dr. Sinclair experimented with his diet to improve his health and longevity. Here's what he found. First thing I cut out was a lot of carbohydrates. I used to eat bread every day. I would just put, if I ate something, it would be on toast. Okay, that, that's my life. I cut that out and have found immediate improvements in my biochemistry levels, particularly my glucose levels. The next thing I cut out was, uh, was meat. I, I worked towards a, a Mediterranean diet, had fish, and eventually now I'm, I'm no meat. And, and that improved my numbers even better. Cholesterol, um, what do you call it, triglycerides all came down. And I have a familial history genetics of heart disease. I have what's called LP little a high levels. LP little a is the worst. You know, about 30% of us have this and we're destined, if we don't do something, to have a, a short lifespan. But though that was very important, was the cutting out meat. Dr. Sinclair's research challenges everything we thought we knew about aging, from diet and fasting to exercise and supplementation. Longevity isn't just about genetics. It's about the choices we make every day. Now we'd love to hear from you. What changes have you made to your lifestyle for better health and longevity? Do you think fasting and meal timing are more important than what we eat? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content like this one. And remember, you are what you eat. So nurture your health and make sure to take your daily dose of longevity seed for a vibrant life.